Well, as a result of Gavin Newsom's shutdown orders, small business owners across the state are struggling to stay in business. After Newsom's second round of shutdown orders, Peter and Gabriel Gamo have made the tough decision to permanently close their brick and mortar store. KUSI's Casey McKinnon is in Santee with the Gamels, who believe the governor's actions are unconstitutional and overreach has gone too far. Hey, Casey. Hey, you guys, good morning. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just another small business that just didn't get enough help during these times to stay alive. And they actually closed their doors yesterday and they have moved their business to online. But we just don't know how long that's going to last being a small business. And we have Gabriella and Peter Gamma with us this morning. Hi, you guys. How are you doing? Hi, good, good morning. How are you? Tell us a little bit about where you guys are from. And when we did look at Peter, your Twitter yesterday, he says you're a true American. Talk about that. Yeah, so I mean, this is the, the land of opportunity, right? And we are both entrepreneurs. We've, uh, we've owned multiple businesses over the years. So we love this country and we know um, as Americans, we know what uh, we are capable of as a country. And we know what, um, uh, as, as Americans, what liberties and uh, opportunities are afforded to us. This was one of those opportunities for us. Um, and for, for it to be shut down by the government and whom we, we trust to protect us and to afford us these liberties, um, it's, been a, it's been a very frustrating, very frustrating thing, um, especially as Americans, especially as proud Americans, especially as, as Americans who love this country. Um, it's, it's always, it's a, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge tragedy to see what's happening um, to this country and to small businesses who largely make up this country. Our, our families made a lot of sacrifices for us to be here today and um, we definitely don't want to take those things and their uh, great sufferings for granted. Yeah, and I know you had people here yesterday in support of you guys and what you really have made into your family business. You have five yes. kids at home, Gabriela. Yes. <laughs> So um, I'm really grateful to you guys. I'm really grateful to KSI for reaching out. I actually had uh, several people call yesterday in support of us just to express their concern for our business. And um, uh, several of them wanted to help with the efforts in recalling Newsom. So that would give us a special election and the ability to uh, vote for perhaps another governor who might lead us in a stronger direction that once again is playing by the same rules for small businesses and the large corporations alike. Um, it's, it's been a frustrating time, but we do, as you said, we have moved everything to being fully online. It's still going to be a work in progress for us over the next several weeks. I had a lot of unique merchandise that was only here physically in the store. It was not crossover onto, we already had a pre-existing online store, um, but they were kind of different factions really. So I will have to work on getting all of these unique and small items that are not really easily portrayed over the computer um, listed online for people to be able to purchase. We did have a big section of our store that was dedicated to handmade and unique items. So those are all things that we'll no longer be able to be purchasing from the local community and other um, artisans around the community. And that's really unfortunate. What are your frustrations with Newsom, like not deeming businesses such as your own as essential? Yes, the, the issue with being able to deem a business as essential or non-essential, it's very arbitrary and um, it's very frustrating. I'll be honest, uh, I was in shock that things like fast food were deemed essential. I can understand grocery stores, obviously we all need to eat, um, but fast food restaurants were deemed essential. They're not really the pinnacle of, as a general rule, the pinnacle of cleanliness. You know, there are outbreaks and things that are tied to these places on a somewhat regular basis. Um, but a place like my business or many others that don't have high risk of exposing the population to different pathogens uh, were not deemed essential businesses. We stayed open because I refused to accept that somebody could dictate to me that 
feeding my family is or isn't essential. Um, and we ended up, through staying open, we were able to, on, early on when businesses were being shuttered and told that they have to have all of their employees wearing masks to be able to come back, we were able to supply fabric to the masses to be able to purchase and be able to create masks that they needed to be able to go back to work. There was a big shortage in the hospitals and whatnot, so we were able to donate a ton that we handmade, that uh, myself and my staff, we, we worked tirelessly to make sure that people were able to go back to work and that other businesses like ours who needed to stay open were able to do that, and that was really important to us. Yeah, Peter, what does the uh, future look like for you guys? Um, we'll rebuild. Ultimately, I mean, this is America, so we will rebuild. Um, the problem with uh, our current situation is that, you know, we don't know what to expect over the next few months. Um, assuming things get back to normal at a reasonable time, then we'll definitely, we'll definitely be reopening our doors. Um, in a new location. In a new though, location. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but as of, as of this point in time we don't know when that'll be there has the governor has not given us any defined um, period of time in which we can expect reasonably for the lockdown to end this whole thing has been incredibly uh, it, it just very incredibly black and white with very little disclosure like we, if you don't have a goal in sight then what do we have to look forward to it's been very arbitrary and the goalposts have changed a lot and yeah. I think that's been very frustrating where we initially started with trying to ensure that we don't have too high of a mortality explosion. Now it's turned into a focus being on case counts, including asymptomatic people. And if we continue well, it, it's, to... It's turned into, it, it started from prevent death, and now it's turned into prevent all sickness. Yes. You know, you're not, you, can, you can't even sneeze in public now without getting, <laughs> without getting odd looks. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. that's been something that's been very difficult, and um, one of my staff members actually has chronic asthma, and that's been yeah. a big stressor for her in feeling feeling stigmatized with asthma, because if allergies are acting up, people might assume that she's ill, and she doesn't want to harm the business in people thinking that we're allowing people who are ill to come to work and possibly right. make so other people Peter ill. And Gabby, thank you for having us this morning. I know thank you can you. speak for a lot of other small businesses in our community. So your story has been heard and we appreciate your guys' time this morning with us. Uh, Paul you. and Lauren, I'm gonna send things back to you, but we're live in Santee at the Organic Fabric Company. Lots of small businesses are hurting right now. Lots. Yeah. I mean, it goes back story to repeated. the one party rule conversation we've had. Uh, the, these decisions can be made by progressive politicians without any fear of blowback at the at the voting booth, unless, of course, maybe November will be different. Mm, time to tell. Yeah. Casey, thank you. Appreciate it.